Hey YouTube, Electric Adventures here with a quick pick up and play video. We have a couple of titles both locally here in Australia, but for one of the older retro systems. I believe we're packing to take off here. Um, this one does have a sticker on the front of it and it actually was the price I paid for it. Uh, so it's obviously been sitting in a second hand store and they decided to post some of their stuff online. So it's for the Sega uh, SG1000 SC3000 computers and it's one I've never played before and that's Sega Flipper. Now there is a, that price sticker up there but I believe it's been on there for a while so I won't be playing with that just yet. The box is in, you know, shelf worn but it's not too crushed if you know what I mean. And there's our back. A fairly simple looking table layout but um, nonetheless a pinball game. It'll be quite interesting to see what it's like. There's the other spine, that's a little bit more worse for wear than the other one. And is it? it's a red label one, so this is an actual Australian release. Let's have a look inside. So I probably shouldn't eat my tea before doing these things. Now it is missing its manual, but the um, interior packing is okay, and the cartridge looks pretty good. Very simplistic cartridge stickers on the Australian ones, just the name. So that's our first one. Now this next one I got in Australia and it only cost me I think $3.29 um, but it is a, um, I mean I believe it must be a Japanese copy because it's, well, it's got yellow writing on it and it has a picture. So there's the picture and the actual game is Star Force. Um, now it's not the same as Star Force for the MSX. Uh, but it, I have actually done a gameplay, technically done a gameplay of this before because this version of Star Force was converted across to the Coleco by Team Pixel Boy. So it'd be interesting to see the original version whether there's any differences. I mean the uh, the Sega SG-1000 is virtually identical to the Coleco except it has 2K of RAM instead of 1K of normal working RAM. So it does allow a bit more but it's even got the same sound processor and everything else is exactly the same. Um, oh well, besides controllers, I suppose. So, two Sega games to have a look at. Um, so we might as well go and give them a play. Right, so here we go with Sega Flipper. Um, I've got no idea what the controls are. Okay, push up and down to do our uh, strength of hitting the ball, and I suppose we just flippers, and then we have the two buttons. Oh, okay. Physics. Oh. Oops, oh, down we go. I mean, as simple as it is, and I mean, it's a fairly open table layout, um, I don't see anything particularly wrong with this. Whoops, ow! Except that I'm terrible at it. Oh, it's really got severe ball physics. Oh! I think I'm dead already. Because there's a couple of targets up there in that top section to, um, to go for. We'll have another go, because we've only got the two games to do. That's quite my very first game on Earth is. Very hard to hold the ball. Hmm. You can hold it. Uh, <clears throat> but if you miss that, you're toast, really. Uh, too slow. And <laughs> went down the side. Ooh. Uh, too slow. And I did the same mistake again. You know, and it's got some you know, repetitive but adequate sound effects. Oh, I believe I'm getting worse. That's the end of it. Uh, but, um, you know, a simple little game. I've, I said I'd never. Once again, I keep on finding titles for the 
the original Sega machines. Try and find some sort of a list. There we go. It really does have quite fast gravity. Ah, down the side. A little better that time though. I'm sure. Oh, too slow. Um, I mean, I'm sure there's a couple of things to do. I mean, there's not many goals and objectives to obviously to get done in there. So it's probably not a game that you would um, get a tremendous amount of gameplay out of, but it's a bit of good fun. There. Oh, let's take a little look. Just to a game. There we go. Even I can improve, eh? Price and to even find it in a box as well, so I don't actually have many of the actual Australian titles, and I have no idea how many came out in, in, in actual Australia. All right, let's try the next game. Right, here we go a Star Force. Um, I said, technically, have played this one because this game was converted across to the ColecoVision by Team Pixel Boy. Like, you can hold the button down. Good. So it is, interesting enough, it is um, a bit different from the MSX version. The MSX version, probably because it has more memory available, it's a bit more colourful. Um, and it also scrolls sideways, so there's more to the playfield. and do as much damage as you can and each one of these bonus things you get gives you bonuses at the end of the level That's sort of a semi-boss thing Sure how. So we're still in Alpha Area 1, so we haven't actually passed the first area yet. Uh, I'm not sure how far it's going to knock me back now. I think I can catch that if I could get near it. Because as I said, it does have 
from memory, a little bit of a power-up system. music and um, a, uh, you know, a different play style than other shooting ups. Unfortunately, it looks like I missed out on that power up now. Probably because I actually didn't get it. I'm sure the number of Bs you get uh, goes towards um, your bonus at the end when you do actually finally uh, finish the stage. 46,600. Mm. Surely I can do better than that. Once again, only two gameplays and um, especially pleased of getting this one for only you know, $3.29 I think was the weird amount I got it for in Australia. Um, I think the postage was like $8 or something but when you get that cheap, you don't mind. I mean, the copies of this... Oops. Oh, God. Um, like, in Japan, I've seen loose copies for, like, $50. I'm talking, but not concentrating. Um, and, um, I mean, there were, a there were two uh, complete copies. Um, I think they might have both been on in Japan. Up until recently. And they were, like, $60. And that's, um, you know, that's a fair amount of money to pay for this system, really. I'm not... I mean, yes, I, I've done quite well in the last year. Um, picked up a, you know, a fair number of titles for the system. And I've enjoyed all of them. Um, but it's not one that I'm... You know... Where I have to collect every single game for it. So that may also means I don't necessarily want to spend too much money on it either, you know. ship anyway, so this will be it, regardless of what will I do. Use that. Run away from him. I'm a total fan of the collision detection. Oh, God, I didn't even see what hit me. Oh, dear. All right, well, I obviously need more practice. Well, there is a couple of very nice games for the um, original Sega SG-1000 SE-3000 series of machines. If they had brought half of these games into Australia, this machine would have done even better than it did. It actually, they actually sold quite a few of uh, the units that was marketed by John Sands. But it just it got off to a good start and then dried up because they didn't bring any more games in. But it looks like there was quite a bit of support in Japan. 
But on the flip side, there was nowhere near as many software titles brought out for these systems as there were the MSX in Japan, so I suppose that's why it died off in the end as far as that's concerned. But I hope you've enjoyed these picks up, pickups as much as I have. Um, thank you to all my subscribers, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Thank you.